G'day guys. I know what you're thinking. This is an amazing gift, and that guy is incredibly handsome. So let's get into it. I'm gonna show you how to turn a can and a little bit of sheet metal into a cool money box. A perfect gift for someone that you care about. Um, super easy, you don't need a lot of tools. I'll chuck a list up of the tools you need to grab and um, we'll get into it. Welcome to Sawdust and Chrome. Go on, go get your stuff, I'll wait. Sawdust and Chrome. Sawdust and Chrome. Everybody loves. Sawdust and Chrome. <laughs> <laughs> what I love best about this project from a teaching point of view is it will teach the kids how to do a bit of marking out. It will teach the kids how to use a few hand tools and it is an intro to the cordless. And they will make a small fortune because it's not that easy to get the coins out. And down the track, we can rivet, take the rivets out, uh, get to our coins and spend our money on more tools. Let's get into it. Hey guys, like always, your safety and the safety of your family members is always my number one concern. So please, if you're new to using the cordless at all, I really suggest you check out the video link that I hope pops up now. And check out my safety video all about using the cordless. Um, while you're there, there's a few other videos you can check out of some of the other uh, equipment that we do come across. If you have any suggestions, I'm happy for you to send me a comment and um, I'll see if I can sort them out for you. All right, I think that's it, let's go. All right, let's make a bit of space for ourselves. Any scrap piece of wood will work. A can of any sort will work. You will need a file of some sort. I've got a small collection of screws, a couple different drill bits, and I've got two different pieces of sheet metal. I don't mind what you use as long as you can successfully cut it with some tin snips. If you can get through it, it's good to go. This piece is a little bit of um, galvanized, galvanized sheet. This is a little bit of aluminium. Aluminium is a little bit easier to use. The gal will be fine as well. I've got two variety of tin snips. These are traditional tin snips. I actually really like these because it's got a longer reach. I find them pretty easy to use. There's a pretty good chance you might already have some of these aviation snips. Um, they work just as well and you might be able to raid mum or dad's tool, toolbox. Center punch, hammer. I've got some marking out gear and Depending on how you want to attach the lid to your top later on, I like to use the riveter. Um, potentially you could glue them on, you could screw them on, but I found in the past that the rivet gun works best. All right, let's get into it. Firstly, you need something round. Something round that will fit inside the lid. Doesn't really matter where you trace it on. Use a texture that will work well. I'll do the gal one as well. This text is called a Sharpie. Um, they're great for metal work. Next thing. I wanna put in the slot where I want my coins to go through. So, totally up to you. It doesn't really matter if it's in the center, doesn't matter if it's towards an end. I might put mine here. In half. Give yourself a Kind of a line where you think your slot might go. Uh, 
and I will mark the center. Mm -hmm. and I might not mind it that long. For where the two rivets are going to go, completely up to you where you put them. As long as you get two in, and as, as long as they hit somewhere in the can, that'll be fine. Um, you can eyeball it. Might put mine there. Next bit. This is one where mums and dads have to help their kids. Put in your small drill bit. Um, if you have them, use a clamp. If you've got them, you can use these guys. These are soft clamps, these are pretty good. Clamp it down. We just need to put a couple holes in it. Hold your drill nice and straight. I might put in three. Put in your Phillips head bit. Put a couple screws in. So that'll hold our sheet metal to our scrap piece of wood and it's much safer if you're going to, uh, for when you drill the holes out. Now depending on your facilities, I'm going to show you guys with a cordless. Um, if you have a drill press, even better, but it is a good idea to use a center punch. So I'm going to center punch a few marks in the center of where I want my slot to go. Space them out evenly. Because that will help me with my drill to find exactly where I want it to go. Again, mum or dad, or whoever's helping out, the adult, can you hang on to the block for your, um, your kids? Try to get as many holes as you can in a row, and if you can, the closer the better, because that will make it easier for us to um, file them out in a little bit. Thicker the scrap, the better. So now we've got a slot there we should be able to use with a file. I won't drill these two yet. That's where my rivet's gonna go. Just in case it's not perfect where it's gonna hit a piece of uh, the material. 
but we can do that later real easily. Um, Remember, if you're new to the cordless drill, you can adjust the speed so it can be nice and slow. Remember, righty tidy, lefty loosey. Now, I want to clean my slot up with a file. Again, depending on your facilities, um, a bench vise would be great. Um, I've got a little machine vise I might use. Or you could clamp it to the edge of your bench. As long as you can get access through the back side and you've got a file that's going to get through there with a little bit of work, you can go for it. What do zombie vegetarians eat? Grains! Grains! <laughs> Rate that gag. <laughs> Leave a comment. This takes a little bit of effort. Please be patient. And if I've worked out my editing skills, I'm gonna play a little, a little uh, maybe some rock music for you while I'm doing it. However you choose to clamp up your piece of metal, make sure you can clamp it as close as you can to the slot you wanna file. If it's too far away, you're gonna find that you might accidentally bend your sheet metal. Let's get into it. I've got the music going because it is an awful sound. If you've got earmuffs and glasses, please make sure you're wearing them. Just feel sorry for me when I do it with 20 year eights, year sevens, junior school kids, all going at once. Find it easy to flip it around. Easy to work on the bottom edge. Side tip, when you're using your file, it only works on the forward stroke, doesn't work on the back. So you should be filing forward, lift it up a tiny bit, back, like that. Little bit more. It might have a tiny burr on its edge. Use your file on a little bit of an angle to get rid of it.
Now the 10 steps. Depending on how old your little helper is, you may have to either hold the sheet of metal for them while they use the 10 snips or vice versa. So they're just like a huge pair of scissors. Work your way around. The more snips you do, the less filing you're gonna to have to do later on. There's any birthdays coming up, Mother's Day, Father's Day, something for granddad or grandma. Really easy, inexpensive gift. I reckon there's a good chance if you go to your local metal shop, tell them what you're up to. Tell them you only need a tiny scrap. Um, if they're a good bloke, they'll just give it to you. So we need to take just the tiniest bit off it so it fits nice. Files do come in different grades. You get different sized teeth. Some are a bit rougher than others. This one's quite fine, but this may take a little while. Cue the rock music. Ideally, you'll still see a little bit of your texture and it's nice and smooth to touch. Get rid of any tiny burrs. Think that'll work. Rivet guns. If you're brand new to using a rivet gun, my only safety advice, and I've been caught out before, is when you squeeze it up, please make sure there's nothing you or little helper wise can get caught or pinched in here. I've done it far too many times and it doesn't tickle. So, rivet gun. I've got a little drill bit that suits the two little rivets I'm going to use. Just little aluminium rivets are best. Um, if you go buy a rivet gun kit, it will come with a little bit of stuff. Um, I might grab a board, I'll show you how they work. Real quickly, I'll explain how a rivet works. So, I've got my rivet, little sleeve, kind of the thicker part goes here. When you use the rivet gun, it will pull kind of this part, the sharp gets pulled that way, and the little ball here gets pulled down, 
and it will turn into kind of this. You kind of get a bit of a bulge as the round section gets pulled through it until it will look like this. And this kind of snaps off. It'll snap off here and you'll get this kind of sleeve section and the ball will be jammed up with the piece of metal that you're uh, attaching. I hope that made sense. So, have my can. Got my sleeve. Make sure you match it so it fits. So we're gonna put two rivets there and they're gonna bounce through in this section. So all I'm gonna to have to get rid of is a little bit of extra filing for the lid. So that's gonna be perfect. The drill bit you use for your rivets, apologies you can't see it very well, is a smidge wider than the shank of this. A smidge is my typical, uh, my technical word. So it's got to be a tiny bit bigger. They're only aluminium cans, and I've had kids do this in the past. Um, get someone to hold it for you, and be really light with the drill. The drill's quite heavy, and if you push too hard, we'll crush our can. So nice and easy. Once you've done one, pop the rivet in. With the rivets, make sure it's pushed all the way down so it can't go any further. Line up where you need it to go. Make sure that's pushed all the way down. Squeeze your trigger all the way you can. Make sure you release it all the way up. All the way down again. And you'll hear it snap. It's a very good chance you will need to help out your little, uh, your little friends that are, you're working with. Our other one. Again, all the way down, all the way in. Not too much pressure downwards or you'll crush your can. Now the last thing to do is I've got to file just a little bit out of here so it matches our lid. Apologies for the sound. Now you should have two matching openings. Second last job. Little bit of metho. We'll get rid of your texture lines. If you don't have metho, a little bit of spit works just as well. And the last job is throw some coin in. Now I've actually done this project a few times before and I've had kids come back to me years and years later and did what I did. My opening only suits gold coins. It only suits $2 coins. Depending on the size of your can, kids have come back to me and said, sir, I saved over $1,000 and I'm assuming they all spend it on tools. Um, thank you so much. This has been Sawdust and Chrome, and uh, good luck. I hope you learned some skills. Thank you. Uh, hey, Ron.
just because we can, we're going to make another one, and Dad's going to help me out this time. Um, I won't give you any more instruction. You guys can just watch. Let's get into it. Here we go. Brocky just finished one with a little bit of help from me. 